Hello candidates, welcome to our science lesson 11. Uh, to begin with, in our previous lesson, we learned about reflection of light when it falls on a smooth shiny surface. And above all, I want you to remember the following. I want you to remember that that day we talked about the reflecting surface. We also talked about a ray of light that strikes the reflecting surface, and we called that ray the incident ray. We also talked about another ray of light that, we, that, that bounces off the reflecting surface, and we called that one the reflected ray. But remember, there is an imaginary line that we named it as the normal. And we said that we draw it with a dotted line because it is imaginary. We talked about angles. And among the angles that we talked about was the angle of incidence. And we said that that is the angle that is between the incident ray and the normal. We also talked about another angle that was the angle of reflection. And we said that is the angle between the reflected ray and the normal. So dear candidates, that is what we looked at in our lesson 10. However, today, we are going to look at something new, and that is images. Uh, whenever we see an object, whenever we see a material, we see it because that object or material reflects light into our eyes. It is the reflection of light into our eyes that forms the images we are able to see. Therefore, let us look at what images are. We are going to say today that an image is a light picture that is formed when light is reflected. Yes, surely images are formed through reflection of light. So what is an image? An image is a light picture formed when light is reflected. Now, dear children, how is an image formed? And I'm saying that an image is formed when light rays are reflected by a smooth, shiny surface. I want you to remember that it is smooth, shiny surfaces that reflect light. Are we together, children? Yes. Now, we have got what we call types of images. And we basically have two types of images. We have got a type of images that we call real images. And we have another type of images that we call virtual images. I want you to remember the two types of images, real images and virtual images. Let us go to what we call real images. For an image to be called real, that image must be formed on the screen. And therefore, what must you know about real images? You must know that real images are images which are formed on the screen. Images which are formed on the screen. Now, when we talk about real images, we are talking about images which are formed on televisions. I believe most of you have televisions at home. We are talking about images which are formed by smartphones. When you use your mother's smartphone, your father's smartphone to take the picture of yourself, that image formed is a real image. We also have images formed by cameras. And we have images formed by cinema screens. Now, what is the major issue there? Devices which form real images. And we are saying we have televisions, we have smartphones, we have cameras, and we have cinema screens. Let us go to the next type of images that we looked at. What is that type of images, dear children? It is virtual images. Virtual images. What is a virtual image? Now, there is a big difference between the real images and virtual images, in a way that for the case of virtual images, they are not formed on the screen. In other words, they are formed behind the screen. I want you to look at yourself on a mirror. You will find that your image is formed behind 
the mirror. You appear to be behind the mirror. Those images that are formed behind the screen are called virtual images. So what are virtual images? These are images which are formed behind the screen. We can also say that virtual images are images which are not formed on the screen. And dear children, there is basically one kind of devices that form virtual images. Let us look at devices which form virtual images. And those devices are basically mirrors. I believe you all have mirrors at home. All mirrors that you have at home form images that we call virtual images. Now, we would like to go ahead to look at mirrors in details. What do we mean by a mirror? I want you to look at the mirror you have at home and describe its appearance. Possibly you will be able to tell me that first of all a mirror is smooth, a mirror is shiny, and it is a glass. It is smooth, it is shiny, and it is a glass. Therefore, we can say that a mirror is a smooth, shiny glass. A mirror is a smooth, shiny glass, which reflects light. A mirror is a smooth, shiny glass, which reflects light. How are these mirrors made? Any mirror that you have at home is made by silvering. Take note of the word silvering. It's made by silvering one side of a glass. Silvering one side of a glass. Or you can say that mirrors are made by painting one side of a glass. Why do we silver? Why do we apply silver on one side of a glass? And why do we paint one side of a glass? In order to make the glass opaque so that it will be able to reflect light. Are we together, children? Now, now that we have known how mirrors are made and what mirrors are, let us go to our next heading, which is types of mirrors. Dear candidates, the mirrors are grouped according to their appearance. Mirrors are grouped according to their appearance. And among the types of mirrors, we have got a type of mirrors that we call plain mirrors. We have got a type of mirrors that we call plain mirrors. And then we also have another type of mirrors that we call, so we are saying that we have plain mirrors and curved mirrors as the types of mirrors that we have. And remember I said that mirrors are grouped according to their appearance. That's why we have those that are flat. Those ones that are flat are called plain mirrors. And then we have those that are curved, that we call curved mirrors. Now, our major point of emphasis today is to look at plain mirrors only. We are not going to look at curved mirrors in this lesson. We shall look at that later on in the coming lessons. But let us look at what we call plain mirrors. What do we mean by a plain mirror? A plain mirror is a flat, smooth, shiny glass. Take note of those words. Flat, smooth, shiny glass on which, on which virtual images are formed or which forms virtual images. Now, we have got characteristics of images formed on plain mirrors. Characteristics of images formed on plain mirrors. Now, I want all of you children to look at yourself on a mirror. And then you'll be able to learn these characteristics. Let us start with the first characteristic. The images are virtual. That is one characteristic. The images are virtual. What does being virtual mean? The, image, the images are formed behind the screen. Two, we have the images are laterally inverted. 
What does it mean to be laterally inverted? It means that the image has reverse sides to those of the object. Like for example, I want you to look at yourself on a mirror. You will discover that where you are facing is not where the image is facing. You cannot see your back through a mirror because the image instead faces the opposite direction. You find that as you face the mirror, the image faces the opposite direction. That's why we say that the images are laterally inverted. Are we together? Our third characteristic of images formed on plane mirrors is the images are upright. The images are upright. My dear, if you look at yourself on a mirror, it will not, actually, your image will appear upright the way you are standing. If you decide to bend, your image will also bend. If you decide to stand upright, your image will remain upright. Your image will not turn the other way around. That's why we say images are upright. The image and object distance from the plane mirror is equal. The image and object distance from the plane mirror is equal. Look at yourself through a mirror. You will discover that the distance of yourself from the mirror is the same as the distance of the image formed from the mirror. That is a characteristic. And then lastly, the image is the same size. The image is the same size and color as the object. What does that mean? Look at yourself through a mirror. Your color does not change. If you are, if you are brown, the image will also be brown. If you are darker skinned, the image will also be dark skin. If you are wearing a white shirt, the color of that shirt comes back. That's why we say the image is the same size and color as the object. Now, let us go to this illustration. Let so let us look at this illustration. This illustration is basically meant to guide us to understand more about the characteristics of images formed on plane mirrors. That is our plane mirror. It is positioned that way. Now, should there be yourself, can be teacher, uh, a teacher, your parent, any other person in your home, coming close to that mirror, you discover that you can stand, for example, three centimeters away from the mirror. And what will really happen? The image will be reflected and the image will have reverse sides to those of yourself or to those of the object. And the distance of the image from that of the object is supposed to be the same. Are we together, children? The image is upright. That is a characteristic. And look at the, the image. Where is it formed? It is formed behind the mirror, behind the screen. And that is why such images that are formed behind the screen are called virtual images. Now, I would like us to look at a real mirror. I would like us to look at a real mirror. And uh, let us take a look at this. This is a mirror. It is a, a plain mirror because it has a flat, smooth, shiny surface. Now, I'm not going to bring here any other object. Already we have objects that you are seeing through that mirror. What can you see there? You can see computers, you can see chairs, you can also see other images there. Now, dear children, we are basically going to look at a 
So we are saying that one, the image, the image is formed on plain mirror surface. Let us look at its remote. The way it appears on a mirror, you find that it is formed way behind this mirror. And that is why we call it a virtual image. Call it a virtual image. Are we together here, children? Now, let us look at other images that are formed behind this mirror. You find that these images are still far away. When you look at they are not very close to this mirror. They are formed behind the mirror. That is still what we call virtual images. And then the images are supposed to be upright. There's no way the image will turn its way upside down. It remains upright. Even you yourself, if you look at yourself through a mirror, your image will remain upright. Your head will not be down and then the legs up. That one is not possible. Unless you decide to position yourself that way. So dear children, though that is what we wanted to look at the characteristics. Let us continue to our next illustration. I want us to look at uh, that illustration. It has, it, is, it has the word tree, but that word tree falls on a plane mirror. It is two centimeters away from the plane mirror. Let us take, for example, it's two centimeters away from the plane mirror. What will happen is the image of the word tree will be formed behind the plane mirror, but it will be the same size as the object itself. And even the distance will be the same. And remember the characteristics, the distance of the image from the plane mirror is equal to the distance of the object from the plane mirror. And then look at those letters. They are upright. They are upright. So, dear children, let us go to this image. Now, this is where we shall ask you to draw. That's where we shall ask you to draw. I want you to look at the object. The object in front of the mirror. For it, it's facing the mirror. But the image will be formed the same distance away from the plane mirror as the object. Then, let us look at the next image. Look at it also. Upright, it is virtual, and then the same distance away from the plane mirror as that of the object. Then, the objects are also the same size as their images. So, dear children, those are the characteristics of images formed on plane mirrors. Let us go to our last part of this lesson. That part of the lesson is optical instruments that use plane mirrors. Optical instruments that use plane mirrors. What is an optical instrument? That is an instrument that uses light in order for it to work. Or an instrument that works by the help of light. And the major optical instruments that use light are periscopes, periscopes. And then we also have kaleidoscopes, kaleidoscopes. Now, dear children, in our next lesson, we shall look at periscopes and kaleidoscopes in details. I thank you very much for listening, and I wish you well. Stay safe.